Uh, we have Deepan Mehta, Director at Elixir Secure Equities, uh, joining in now. Deepan, uh, thank you for joining in. Good afternoon. In the financial space, is there something that you like? Uh, the two stocks that Abhishek mentioned, but also we're looking at uh, some moves coming by in something like a Bajaj Finance, Bajaj FinServe. HDFC Life has moved higher as well. Uh, it is a broad uh, swathe, uh, brush that I'm giving you. Um, anything that you like here? Yeah, Mangalam, good afternoon and thank you for having me on your show. Yes, I think uh, there's a lot of choice when it comes to banks and BFCs, but our preferred pick with usual disclosure is, I think, within the bank space, we like IDFC First Bank. It has been hitting new highs lately. And amongst all the banks, it had, um, I would say, amongst the best results on qualitative and quantitative terms as well. And it's a new generation bank, high focus on technology, very high spreads. And over the years, the company has increased its uh, Casa ratio as well, which is very, very promising and provides a lot of comfort. Within the NBFC space, you want to be with the NBFCs, which have which had survived the ILFS crisis and which still managed to raise resources and control their NPAs. And two names come to mind. Chola Mandalam, again, if you look at the numbers which came for the March quarter, were exceptionally good. And second, of course, is Bajaj Finance, which I thought the numbers were pretty decent for the March quarter. And as they transition themselves to a full-fledged full fintech company. I think more and more value will be added. So these are the two companies we are quite optimistic on. And a high-risk, high-return kind of a, a strategy could be the MFIs, the likes of a Credit Access Grameen or Spandana also, where I feel that there's scope for earnings to get, uh, to re to, for the earnings to move up and the P's to get re-rated as well. Mm. Uh, well, uh, you know, keep an eye on the broader markets. A couple of these stocks which absolutely got bombed out. Uh, HLE Glass Coat, you know, just pull up the intraday chart out there. Uh, you'll see that today the stock has moved to the high point of the day. The volumes as well are higher than normal. You know, the stock is up because there is a margin recovery on a sequential basis. I'm not sure whether there's a con call or something that's on. But if you take a look at it from the peak, the stock is actually half of what it was. You know, so it was at around 1,200 rupees odd adjusted. And today it's moving up. But otherwise, you know, it's been a rank underperformer. Pull up the last one-year chart, actually. Don't only pull up today's chart. It's moving higher today. But the last one-year chart will tell you the kind of pain these companies have seen. Margins from high teens come down to low teens. And in fact, uh, you know, from those elevated levels, it's seen a sharp correction. Well, uh, Deepan, I wanted to ask you about a couple of other names that have absolutely got beaten down. Inox Wind, as well as Suzlon. Mm, I think I know how you, you know, how you approach these companies. But they have been rank underperformers. Suddenly, you're hearing some pos positive news flow that's coming in there. We had the management of Inox when they're talking about being debt-free in the next 18 months. They're talking about big revenues as well. And both those two stocks have come back on the radar. But what's your view? Avoid or try to play it? Yeah, good afternoon, Nigel. I think these stocks have tried to capture investors' imagination several times in the past. And it's a compelling story, I think. Uh, you know, renewable energy is a focus area. Uh, ESG is a very hot topic when it comes to investing. And one could expect that the way wind energy capacities are coming up, these companies should have no dearth of orders. But Suzlon nearly, I think, went under and had to be rescued. And Inox Wind also has underperformed drastically. And I myself have personally lost money in both these companies. So I my, my view is uh, negative for these companies. Uh, but you know, you could have a trading rally at any point of time. And the order book position is fine. It's just that execution, managing the margin, managing the return ratios, the balance sheet. I think all these are really challenging uh, for these companies. And I don't know why, but even the Sterling and Wilson, the other company which was engaged in renewable energy and they were on the solar side, they also had a very tough time. And, uh, you know, that company also had to deal with a lot of uh, balance sheet <laughs> issues. So there's something in this equipment manufacturing companies uh, which supply to the renewable energy, and unless we don't have some stability in earnings, I wouldn't want to venture into that sector. Hmm. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the view coming in on the renewable energy space. Uh, Dipan, do stay on. Aurobindo Pharma is one of the big movers, reported a good set of Q4 numbers. Ekta joins in with a brokerage call. Ekta.
Thanks for that. Well, I'll start with Dan Capital. <laughs> Buy rating, target price 809. According to them, management is positive on the improving growth and the relative price stability, which is beginning to emerge in the US markets. Kotak ad rating, target price 625. The company is guiding for improved traction. They believe uh, that they expect the company to deliver an EBITDA CAGR of 15% over FY23 to 26. Ilara accumulate, target price 691. The management has a target of further margin improvement in FY24 and are optimistic about the US business according to Elara. City buy target price 660. Stock is up 35% in the last couple of months. Now trading slightly above its five-year mean. They believe for the valuations to sustain following factors are crucial for the company. For example, the benefits of improved generic pricing scenario to probably continue uh, for the company in the US markets. Bofa buy target price 725 and uh, they believe it was an inline quarter. EBITDA margins were tad lower but the commentary was positive. So overall, bullish calls coming in for a window. Uh, Dipan, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Ekta, thank you very much for that. Dipan, thoughts on Aurobindo Pharma or anything else in the pharmaceutical pack which catches your fancy? Yeah, I think uh, very good for Aurobindo shareholders. After many quarters, we have seen a decent set of numbers from Aurobindo. But uh, there'll be a high degree of volatility in Aurobindo's earnings uh, because the main market, the US and other export markets, sometimes there is intense competition and price cuts and other times there are opportunities that the companies can explore and uh, certain products, uh, they can get a higher margin as well. So it's not like a straight secular growth story as it was earlier. From that point of view, uh, one cannot be a really long-term investor in Aurobindo Pharma. But yes, I think trading rallies can come from time to time. And there's certainly a case for re-rating the P multiple of Aurobindo Pharma, which I think is at extremely attractive levels compared to its peer group. But the top pick, I think, from a risk return profile and from a safety viewpoint, would be Sun Pharma. I thought the numbers were exceptionally good. And they are on their path of increasing their uh, contribution from specialty products. And the focus has again come back into the domestic market. And I think that uh, uh, over the years, uh, if they continue on this strategy, uh, the street will start to give, give them a higher PE multiple. And we may see more, uh, uh, I would say, visibility when it comes to earnings and less volatility. And that's always very positive. So within the pharma space, there are a few pockets of opportunity. But from a safety profile, we prefer Sun Pharma. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Deepan, uh, you know, uh, just as an aside, a broker I was talking to uh, was telling me that uh, the two best asset classes in the world are uh, U.S. large caps and Indian small caps. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> I mean, but it's true, right? Look at uh, how, they, how these, uh, some of these stocks uh, are uh, running up. Uh, and uh, maybe there is a turn, maybe expectations of a turn, whatever, but... Uh, it's just been an incredible uh, kind of a move. What are you doing at the margin, Deepan, uh, in, in this mid-cap, small-cap kind of uh, uh, market-cap zone? Uh, anything new you've bought? Anything you've got your eyes on? No, Prashant, I think you you got the you hit the nail on the head. I don't track U.S. large-cap, but by and large, those stocks have done well because technology has done well and this entire chat GPT and AI is proving to be a, a kind of a shot in the arm for... U.S. Uh, tech companies and certainly capture the imagination over there. And also it's true that we are, I think, entering into a new phase of this bull market. And in that context, small mid-cap stocks should do exceptionally well. Look at the sectors which have done well. I think if you see uh, right from auto, auto ancillary, banks, capital goods, all of these the sectors have done pretty well. And if you go down the line away from the OEMs and the large companies and you go into the small mid-sized companies within these sectors, I think there's a scope for great uh, performance. Who knows, you could find a few multi-baggers as well. We are searching for them just now. But by and large, I think the next few months, the focus has to be on small mid-cap companies. Let's just take capital goods. I think uh, smaller companies which come into our mind at this point of time is a company like Praj Industries, which is into biofuels. Exceptional set of numbers. JV with Indian Oil Corporation could cert certainly open up a new uh, avenue of growth for them. Another company which came with very good set of numbers and has been a steady performer is ISGEC, ISGEC Engineering. Another quality player which did well when the entire capital goods sector was under pressure. Within the uh, NBFC uh, space, bank space, we spoke about IDFC First Bank, but I think AU Small Finance Bank also is hitting new highs. And that's been an absolute outperformer when it comes to uh, stock price returns as well as uh, overall improvement in the financials. 
and amongst the NBFCs, uh, we do like, uh, as I said, the MFIs uh, as well as uh, Kyola Mandalam Finance. So like that, I think if you go group by group, industry by industry, and look at the companies which have done well last two, three quarters, I think uh, if you bet on those companies, the next few quarters could be very interesting and you could have a sizable return on the investments made over there. Okay. All right. Uh, Dipan, uh, put your, your view on that. By the way, we had some flashes on NMBC for the last couple of months. They've been not cutting prices and international prices have been lower. So on expected lines, well, they've gone ahead and they have to bite the bullet. Now we're getting into monsoon season as well. They've cut prices by around 400 to around 500 rupees or depending on the grade that you're looking at. This was expected, actually. We had asked the management as well, post the con call. So that's why the stock is not reacting. Well, time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Vinay Jai Singh of JM Financial. He'll discuss some stocks and themes that he likes. Uh, looking good for the markets right now. A 100-point uptake on the Sensex is what we're seeing. The Nifty is too picking up some sort of pace right now, and that's... Uh, Good to see ICICI Bank and Bajaj Twin. So Bajaj FinServe, Bajaj Finance, uh, what we've been talking about. But now add to that ICICI Bank to the mix. And that explains why the Nifty is closing in on that 18,650 mark. The last couple of, uh, uh, you know, the last 40 minutes or so of trade, extremely crucial given the Fin Nifty expiry. The Nifty Financial Services actually has moved to the high point of trade alongside the Nifty Bank as well. The Nifty Bank is now above that 44,400 mark. But a bunch of stocks not doing too well. Campus Activewear is one of them. Opened lower in today's trading session and now is at the low point of trade with a cut of almost 7 odd percent. That's because of the poor results that the company reported. In fact, uh, you know, the revenues of them uh, in the fourth quarter declined by about a percent and a half. But more than that, it was the EBITDA which fell by about 28 odd percent. The margins came off from closer to 22% to 16% as well. The net profit now you would see optically it's virtually unchanged, but the tax expense has come down 80% from last quarter to this quarter, as a result of which uh, the impact on the net profit is limited. But, uh, you know, it's been weak over the last three or four years. The company's revenues have compounded over 25-26%, but now no growth in their revenue and margins contracting to 16% as against the average of 20-22% that the company has been reporting over the last few quarters does not go down well with the street. Uh, the stock has corrected a fair bit from its highs. In fact, post-listing peak was upwards of 630 odd rupees as well. So now the stock trading a little around 330 odd rupees telling you that uh, there has been a 50% correction as well. A large part of that was on account of valuation correction and uh, the second leg now comes in on account of growth disappointment at the low point of trade for campus activewear. So we'll see how this goes. The large thesis of athleisure footwear doing extremely well is something that will be put to test. Uh, back to you guys. Okay, let's talk about another stock. Uh, and this one is doing well in trade, Repco Home Finance. Uh, it's up 11%. And this is after the management made some very strong bullish comments in the conference call yesterday. Abhishek joins in for more. Abhishek. Uh, well, Reema, as you mentioned, you know, there are bullish comments uh, that they made in the con call uh, yesterday. Uh, dispersal's uh, growth or sanction growth is expected to be around 20% for FI24. And they are guiding for a loan growth of about 12%. So company expects a turnaround in growth performance in certain geographies like uh, Gujarat, uh, Maharashtra, especially in the Pune Belt and Kerala. So they may look to raise rates on an uh, you know monthly basis going ahead, uh, which will uh, you know support the net interest margin or the spreads that they carry. So they have guided for a net interest margin of about 4.8 percent to 5 percent for FI24, along with a spread of anywhere between 3 percent to 3.3 percent. Uh, cost to income ratio is expected to decline in FI24 which means that operating efficiency will improve in FI24 when compared to FI23 and management expects a credit cost of around rupees 25 crore in FI24 and they will uh, you know bring down the gross NPA by about rupees 100 crore in FI24 so stage 2 or loans due between 61st day to 98th day uh, that is at 13% at the end of FI23 they are expecting that to decline less than 10% by the end of FI24 so worst is over in terms of stress coming out of the restructured portfolio is what the management had mentioned in the con call. Back to you. Mm. And uh, the stock has also teen, uh, seen a big turn. Abhishek, thank you very much for that. Deepan is still with us. Deepan, you did uh, mention MFIs uh, where, uh, again, uh, some of the companies like Spandana, Credit Access, etc. are doing very well. Any exposure to uh, home finance companies like Repco? 
No, I think Repco came out with a decent set of numbers as well. And uh, it's another well-managed housing finance companies. And despite focusing on the self-employed, their NPAs have been pretty decent. Uh, I would say good management over there. And what I think is happening right now is a re of the price to earnings multiple. These are great times for housing finance companies also with the real estate market really picking up and the volumes also zooming over there. So yes, I think uh, Repco Finance does have some more legs to move up. All right, uh, Deepan, uh, thank you very much uh, for that. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us through uh, that uh, commentary. So uh, that's